Fortunately, there are a number of solutions that we can implement in order to conserve our soils and to maintain proper soil health. One example of this is to leave crop residues in the soils so that they can stabilize the soil structure. In this picture, you see the roots and the bottoms of the stalks of corn. And so this crop is being left, the bottom part of the corn is being left in the soil after the corn was harvested over the winter. And this allows the, the roots to maintain the soil in place until more corn is planted or, or soybeans or some other crop is planted next in the next spring. This is another example of that where we have the, you can see the corn, uh, remainder of the corn crop from the year before and then they planted new rows of corn next to the existing rows from the year before. So you can see here there's, a, there's the cobs of corn and there's the stubble and there's some roots still in the ground. This helps to reduce erosion by wind, but also water. Cover crops are also a popular way to reduce erosion. And um, in this case, there's a cover crop and there's also like a mulch layer on the soil. And both of these are helping to prevent erosion. This, this cover crop and mulch layer also helps to trap soil moisture, which helps to prevent or reduce the evaporation of water from the soil. Um, it improves soil organic matter, so this organic matter is going to decompose and, and be added back into the soil, and so it will improve the amount of carbon that's there and also the amount of other nutrients. And these cover crops help to attract pollinators, and that's really important in many different agricultural areas um, because we do have a shortage of bees right now and so these pollinators help to pollinate crops so that you get a higher yield. And so this is a picture of an almond orchard in California and so we don't see the almond trees, this is just a close-up of the ground and the cover crop and mulch that's present. No-till farming is very important and in order to conserve our soils um, tilling is whenever you turn over the soil, which exposes it to wind and water erosion. Um, when you till the soil, it disrupts that soil structure. It digs up the roots that were helping to hold the soil together. And so tilling in general is not a great, a great thing to do for soil health. In this case, we have um, this machine here is actually drilling soybean, um, soybeans into the ground rather than tilling up the soil, it's just putting those into the ground. Um, and then there's wheat stubble still on the ground from the crop before. And soybeans are excellent for increasing the amount of nitrogen present in the soil. So often farmers who farm wheat or corn will alternate with soybeans so that they can add nitrogen back into the soil in between the corn and wheat crops. Another, another thing that we can do to help with soil health is to use, if, especially on land that's sloped, is to use what they're ca they call terraces or conservation buffers. Um, and actually this is showing both. I shouldn't, they're not the same thing. So a terrace, a terrace is, in this case, are these flat pieces of land. So this is a sloped field, but they flattened out the different areas so that you wouldn't have um, sheet erosion, water flowing off of this very quickly. It's, mo it's relatively flat in each area. And then there's this grassy area in between the different terraces, and that helps to absorb some of the soil that, that might get washed down and so that it can keep washing away. Um, and it also helps to filter the water that gets washed off of the soil surface. Um, so that's called a conservation buffer, these little soil areas. And then you'll notice that along the stream, at the bottom of the hill and the bottom of the fields, there's this area of grass and trees, and that's the conservation buffer, which helps to, um, like I said, filter the water and keep soil from eroding into the stream. Mm. Overgrazing is another issue. We talked about how overgrazing can lead to desertification. And 
So this is an, a picture of a well-managed rangeland in Arizona. You can see that there's grass all over, the cows have not overeaten, and they've maintained a healthy population of grass to hold that soil in place. I like this picture because it shows it shows um, what can exist, you know, in a healthy rangeland and a not so healthy rangeland. So if you look on the left side of the fence, this is a not this is an overgrazed rangeland. And then if you look at the side with the cows on it, these cows are grazing on a healthy rangeland. And there's lots of grasses there, and they have an ample food supply. So you just have to, you know, you have to maintain the right number of cattle for the amount of land that you have in, if you don't want to overgraze it and, um, and not have a healthy soil and, and plant system. Also, when you, uh, when in farming practices, if, if agricultural chemicals are not used appropriately, and I don't want to say that all inorganic chemicals are bad, um, but if they're not used appropriately, if you add too much or if you add the wrong ones at the wrong time, that's not good for the natural ecosystem that lives within the soil and it can disrupt the natural interactions of microbes and plants. So you can have too much nitrogen or too much of a different nutrient and that causes an imbalance to occur. And so you have to be aware of, like for example, um, before applying a fertilizer to the field, you should take a soil sample and see what nutrients are deficient and what nutrients need to be added and not just add things without knowing what is needed in that soil system. So I'd like to, to end with just a quote and a reminder um, that the vital part of soils is topsoil, which unfortunately is also the part most susceptible to the effects of weather. That's what makes protecting it so crucial. And so this is a quote from a scientist who works at um, NRCS in Minnesota. And this is, an, this is a picture of topsoil that's been eroded. And you can see all kinds of different types of erosion here. We have sheet erosion, we have rill erosion, we have gully erosion. And um, trees have been eroded away with the soil. And so this is just reminding us that, you know, we have to protect our soils, protect particularly the top soil, because without it, we can't grow crops and we can't maintain a healthy soil system.